there, my name is Dr. Marissa May. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at order of operations as well as the real number line. And then we'll finish up with some adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing integers. Let's jump right into the order of operations. Now over here on the left, I have put the order of operations beginning with parentheses, then exponents, then multiply or divide, add or subtract. You may have learned the phrase PEMDAS I had before as a way to help you remember these steps. But let's take a look at our problem number one here. We're going to look through, do we see any parentheses? I don't, so I get to skip that step. Then we look for any exponents. Again, I get to see, skip that step because I don't see any. Now I'm gonna multiply or divide in order from left to right. So if I start over here on the left, I come to this multiplication part first. And so I'm gonna do 14 times three, which would give me 42. You'll notice that I wrote the 15 minus part ahead of the 42 because I didn't do anything with that. Now, again, we go through the problem from left to right, starting over here on the left. I have, then I come to the division. So I'm gonna do that next. 42 divided by six would give me seven. That lets me know I'm done with the multiply or divide step. I finish up by subtracting 15 minus seven to give me eight. Now, if we look at problem number two, it looks a little bit different only because we have this division going on with the fraction bar. So what we do is we follow the order of operations on the top, we follow the order of operations on the bottom, and then we can divide at the end. So let's take a look on the top. I know that I see multiplication, I see addition, and I see multiplication again. So order of operations in our list tells us to multiply first. So two times seven would give me 14. And then we'll do the five times three, which will give me 15. Now that's just on the top. Um, now we have the 30 minus 29 on the bottom. We haven't done anything with that. Next on the top, we will go ahead and do the addition. 14 plus 15 gives me 29. And on the bottom, 30 minus 29 gives me one. Now this fraction bar actually means divide. So 29 divided by one would give me 29. And that's my answer here. Now our third example with the order of operations brings in exponents. So I think it's a worthwhile example for us. We're gonna take a look. First of all, we don't have any parentheses, so we'll do the exponents. So three to the second. I get a lot of students that think this means three times two. It actually doesn't. Three to the second says to write the three two times and multiply. So you can see then that instead of three times two, we do three times three, which is nine. I'm gonna write the times 10 part because we haven't got to that step in the order of operations. Then I'll do six to the second power. And remember, that's not six times two. That's write the six two times and multiply. So that gives me 36. So we finished the exponent step. Our next step is to multiply or divide in order from left to right. So I come to the multiply part. Nine times 10 is 90. And then I come to the divide part. So 36 divided by 12 is three. And then we can finish up with the subtraction. I want you to really practice with this order of operations, making sure that you follow it every time. You may want to write down your PEMDAS acronym and just check off the steps as you do them, because I want you to see that you're actually, you know, checking each one of those before you go forward in the problem. Next, let's take a look at the real number line. Now, the real number line is a number line on which every real number can be matched with a point on the line. So I have a line here. I want it to represent the real numbers. And the first thing we want to do is to label zero. I'm going to put it relatively in the middle. It's okay if you didn't put it in the middle. I just kind of like for it to be in the middle. Number two, label the side that has the positive real numbers. The positive real numbers are always to the right of zero, and the negative numbers are always to the left. So zero is the dividing number between the positives and the negatives. So let's look at number four. We're gonna put three seven halves and square root of 16 on the number. 
So let's think about these. Three is pretty easy. Seven halves is three and a half. And square root of 16 is four. So that's a number times itself that would give us 16. And so I'm going to put those on here. Let's see, I might just do like one, two, three. So I'll just draw a dot for three. And then I'll put four here. But remember, we're writing it as square root of 16. And then in between them would be the three and a half, which is seven halves. So you see how I ordered them, put them in the right spot. Let's do the same thing for number five here. I'm going to put negative three, negative two and one third, and then negative square root of 25, which will be negative five. So here's negative one, negative two, negative three. So I'll put negative three here. Notice that I counted those backwards from zero. Negative two and a third, I'll put right here, negative two and one third. And then negative five would be out here. So this is negative square root of 25. Okay, so think of zero. Oops, sorry about that with my video. Think of zero and then you go one, you know, positive one, negative one, positive two, negative two, out from zero when you label your number line. Next, let's talk a little bit about absolute value. Absolute value is the distance a real number is from zero on the number line. Because it's a distance, absolute value is always positive. So when we look at A here, we're asking ourselves the absolute value of nine, and we're saying how far is nine from zero? Well, nine is nine from zero on the number line. Look at B, how far is negative 17 from zero? Well, negative 17 is 17 away from zero, just in the left direction. But because it's a distance, we're going to make it positive. Ooh, C is tricky. I want you to fix your eye first on that absolute value of negative 8. Absolute value of negative 8 says, how far is negative 8 from zero? It's 8. And then this says, okay, now stick a negative on the answer. So we get negative 8 as our final answer there. Look at D. We want the absolute value of negative four, which would be four. And then we want to add it to the absolute value of three, which would be three. So we add those and get seven. But notice I had to do the absolute values first. They're a little bit different on E. E wants us to do the subtraction first. 12 minus three gives me nine. So I'm asking the absolute value of nine. How far is nine from zero? That would be nine. Look at F. This is another one where we're going to do the absolute values first. So the absolute value of 8 would be 8. And the absolute value of negative 3 would be positive 3. And then we subtract to give us 5. Practice with the absolute values. I think D, E, and F are good examples of when we do the absolute value first versus when we do the subtraction or addition inside before we take the absolute value. All right, friends, next, let's take a look at adding and subtracting integers. Now, I like to do this with what I call good guys and bad guys. When you see a positive number, I want you to think of those as the good guys. And when you see a negative number, I want you to think of those as the bad guys. So let's take a look at number one, positive four plus negative three. Now, the positive four is going to represent the four good guys. And negative three is going to represent three bad guys. Now, when the good guys and bad guys do a battle, one good guy takes out one bad guy. One bad guy takes out one good guy. So if you're looking at these good guys and bad guys, I ask you who's going to win. The good guys are. Why are the good guys going to win? Because there's more of them. How many more good guys are there? One. So since there's a good guy, one good guy left over, and the good guys are positive, we know the answer is positive one. So remember, one good guy takes out one bad guy each time, and you're looking for what's left over. Now, let's take a look at number two. We have negative four plus negative one, so that's four bad guys doing battle with one bad guy. Oh no, there's no good guys to cancel out any of the bad guys. So we have five bad guys who are gonna win. So that lets us know that negative five is our answer. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Negative three plus, negative, plus positive one. 
The negative three are the three bad guys. Positive one is one good guy. So who's going to win? The bad guys are. Why? Because there's more bad guys. So how many more bad guys are there? You guessed it. There's two more bad guys. So our answer here is negative two. It's negative because the bad guys are winning. And it's two because there are two bad guys left over. Now, there are some other ways to remember this, but I hope when you see positive and negative integers being added together, you think about good guys and bad guys. So next, let's take a look at how that affects subtraction. When we do subtraction, I like to use the phrase add a line, change a sign. So what do I mean by that is I'm going to change the subtraction to an addition by changing the sign of the next number. So I add a line to the subtraction to make it addition and I change the sign of the next number. So that means now I have two good guys battling four good guys. There's my two good guys together with my four good guys. So who's going to win? You guessed it. The good guys are going to win by how many? You're right. Six good guys. So my answer is positive six. Let's do one more. Negative five minus negative two. So I'm going to add a line to the subtraction to make it addition and change the sign of the next number. So now my problem really is negative five plus positive two. I have five bad guys battling two good guys. So who's going to win? The bad guys are going to win by how many? The bad guys win by three. So our answer, bad guys win, means it's negative. Three means that's how many are left over. I hope this helps with your add a line, change a sign to change the subtraction to addition and think about your good guys and bad guys. All right, let's finish up our time together with multiplying and dividing integers. So I want you to look at my graphic here. If you are multiplying and dividing and the signs are the same, the answer is positive. So you can see in my smiley face, two positives make us positive, two negatives make us positive. Okay. And if the signs are different, then the answer is negative. Again, think of my, my faces there. If one eye is closed and one eye is open, then it is a sad face. So look at number one. We've got three times four, which is 12. And then we've got two negatives. We've got same sign. So my answer is positive. Look at number two. Five times four gives me 20 times two gives me 40 times one gives me 40 and then let's take care of the signs negative times a negative gives me a positive positive times a positive gives me a positive positive times a negative gives me a negative all right look at number three then negative 18 divided by nine so 18 divided by nine is two and then we had a negative divided by a positive which makes the answer negative one more, number four, negative 42 divided by six. So 42 divided by six gives me seven, but we have a negative divided by a positive. So that makes my answer negative. Friends, I hope this lesson has helped you with order of operations, real numbers, absolute value, as well as add, subtract, multiply, and divide the integers. Feel free to leave me a comment below. If you have further questions, I'd be happy to help. Bye for now.